Hi, I have been traveling quite a bit for business recently and haven't been able to make many in-depth videos. But I'm going to try to find time to make at least one video a month. That said, the reason I mentioned traveling is because I had to go through airport security a lot and a few of my colleagues were wondering if the airport security x-rays would do any harm to electronics specifically the EEPROMs and EEPROMs inside the devices. And also you might have seen it from many sources that flying at 30,000 feet, you will receive a dose of somewhere between 3 and 5 microsieverts per hour, or roughly 20 to 50 times the radiation you would receive at sea level. And is this radiation level safe for electronic devices? The short answer is a resounding yes. I did some research on this subject and found a couple of scientific publications that studied the effect of radiation on EEPROMs, and I will provide the links below. In one of the publications, it was observed that CMOS programmable ROM was erased after a dose of 380 gray, which is 380 sievers, in equivalent dose, which is about 50 times the fatal dose for a human being. The radiation source used in this study was an electron accelerator. And in another study, a cobalt-60 gamma ray radiation source was used. And it took 116 kilorad, which is about 1160 gray or 1160 sieverts to erase the EEPROMs in the experiments. Although the study didn't include any flash devices, the basic operating principles for all these non-volatile memories are quite similar, which utilize floating gate transistors. So we kind of get an idea of how much radiation is needed to totally erase the information stored in your electronic devices. Of course, the exact doses needed to erase a specific type of non-volatile memory depends on a lot of factors. For instance, the feature size of the lithography which affects how much charge the floating gate can hold and whether the flash device is a single cell, single level cell, multi-level cell, so on and so forth. But the ballpark is that it takes many times the lethal dose to erase the content in your solid state storage. And to put those numbers into perspective, I placed a EEPROM like this one along with a piece of uranium ore that I had in my collection. And I put them together for about uh, two months and uh, to see if there's any impact to the data that we can read out. So I will show you that uh, setup here, but uh, here is the box of uh, containing the uranium ore. And as you can see, I, the uranium sample is here in that plastic bag. And the EEPROM had been playing face down uh, to this uh, surface so that to make sure that the exposure is the maximum. Now, this one is actually by um, this rock sample by um, the sample size is actually quite radioactive. I can show you right here even with this uh, cover closed. So for instance, uh, let me just turn on the Geiger counter here. And as you can see, as I place it on it, it immediately started uh, going crazy. And uh, so this is actually going to take up quite a bit. Uh, I think to reach around uh, 4 microsieverts per hour, which is roughly the radiation at the cruising altitude, or a little bit higher for that matter. And uh, the point is that this is actually uh, quite radioactive in the, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, typical radiation sources that you are exposed to in your daily life. But of course, this is actually, even at this level, is quite safe and uh, there's no concern uh, whatsoever. And uh, of course, keep in mind that the majority uh, particles emitted from a uranium decay is alpha, are alpha particles. And uh, some of them are beta are particles and also a very small portion are gamma, gamma rays. But nevertheless, you can see that we're already over four microsieverts per hour, which is still rising. So that's kind of the radiation on the outside. Of course, if we uh, open this lid and uh, we are examining it, putting it really close to the sample here, 
you can see that it will continue to rise. In fact, I measured before, if I, uh, depends on which side I'm putting the gyro counter on, it could be as high as uh, 10 microsieverts per hour. So that radiation is relatively high as far as the rock sam sample is concerned. But the point is that that EEPROM has been sitting there for the past two months. And as you can see in a few minutes, I will show you that uh, there's, there's absolutely no effect on that uh, uh, EEPROM here. So anyway, so this is the, uh, the radiation from that uh, uranium sample here. Okay, so let's start by reading a EEPROM that uh, I have a bunch of. And this one is a AM27C512 that I bought a bunch. They all came with the same firmware. And uh, so this one has not been erased. So we'll take a look at what the content is and we'll use that as a reference. So let me pop that in and uh, let's read. So let's take a look. So we have a checksum of a B8 to DE. So let's remember this and later on we'll use that to check if other contents of other EEPROMs are uh, the same. So you can see we have uh, quite a bit of uh, content in there and uh, towards the end and towards the beginning there it's blank. So with this reference read, let's uh, check one of the other EEPROMs that we use the UV LED to uh, shine on it. So this is the one that we were just using as a reference. And the second one here, I set up a UV light hit directly at the window. And the UV is from a UV LED. So it's not that all that powerful. And also the wavelength is actually quite a bit longer than the 290 uh, nano meter that is required to erase these kind of EEPROMs. But nevertheless, we, uh, we, we actually can see that uh, we were able to erase some of the content. Of course, that's after about uh, 12 hours continuous shining the light on it. So let's take a look. So now remember this is a blank, uh, sorry, this uh, B802D was what we had before as our baseline. And now let's read again. And indeed, you can see that the content changed to BA0C1E, so which means that uh, something is uh, different here. Of course, we can't see that using our naked eyes, but uh, we can later on check the difference with a uh, program here. So now that's the one, uh, the result from the UV light. And also, I have another one that I used a uh, UV laser to try to erase and uh, so let's take a look at that and this one I had the laser on for about uh, oh for about uh, I think about a few hours and I had to use an ex external power supply because the battery would not last that long so let's uh, take a look and uh, nope as you can see it's B802D so this one did not get erased so next is our uh, is our radiation irradiated irradiated uh, EEPROM, and uh, this one was a uh, actually I had it uh, with that uranium core for about uh, two two months now, and uh, as you can see from my previous video that uh, not previous video previous clip that uh, we had pretty uh, decent amount of radiation. So let's check out whether or not this uh, has any changes in the EEPROM. So let's take a look and we read again. And as you can see, nope, uh, it is still B802DE. And as you can see, the uranium core did not alter the content of this EEPROM at all. And now let's take a look at the uh, content of the par uh, partially erased EEPROM with the uh, UV LED to see what we uh, what what contents are different. So for that, I'm pulling up this uh, program that compared difference of the files, and I have done that uh, a couple of times. So you can see that we have the original one, and uh, so I used the UV light to to uh, uh, 
to test a couple of, uh, on a couple of EEPROMs. And here is the result of one. And you can see that we are seeing some of the differences. Interestingly, the differences you are seeing here are towards the middle section. And probably that's because the, um, the light pattern uh, that, that is shined on the die. But uh, nevertheless, you can see that it's quite um, uh, ununiform, in fact. And uh, only portions of it had been uh, changed. And considering how long we have had that uh, under the UV light, and this one actually had been there for overnight. So if you are counting on, if you are using this UV light to erase your EEPROM, you will have to be very, very patient. Or maybe you have to use quite a few of uh, powerful UV LED to do that. So anyway, so let's take a look at the second one we have. So the second one, uh, I irradiated for mm, approximately the same time amount of time. And as you can see, the results are mm, similar. So just curious, uh, let's compare the two. Interestingly, again, you can see that towards the beginning, we didn't see any changed content. And towards the end, we didn't see any changed content either. So it has to be the light intensity towards the middle. But let's take a look at the uh, comparing uh, the two semi-erased erased, uh, um, EEPROMs with the content with one to another to see uh, if there's any uh, changes that are interesting. So again, you can see that uh, the changes are pretty random, but again, towards the middle section. So that's pretty much what we got with the uh, UV uh, LED. And uh, the results are a little bit surprising. I would have thought it would be uh, more dramatic. In, in fact, I would have thought you would be able to erase the whole chip uh, by shining on it for overnight. But apparently, um, that's not the case. And as you can see, given how much information is altered here, and it's going to take you a really long time if you're just relying on a UV LED to erase your chip. So what's the verdict here? Well, it's pretty obvious from the data and experiments I've shown in this video that uh, the radiation level required to erase a non-volatile memory device is many magnitudes higher than the typical radiation dose received during your lifetime of flying and airport security screening. The doses received by your carry-on luggage is roughly one millisiever, give or take, and uh, again, it's too small to cause any damage to your non-volatile memory devices. And you really don't need to worry about losing data due to airport security scanning or flying for that matter. And as a side note, you saw that erasing EEPROM using an ultraviolet LED is uh, feasible, but uh, highly ineffective. So if you do need to reliably erase an EEPROM, just pick up a cheap EEPROM eraser like this one, which uh, has a proper 290 nanometer fluorescent lamp inside, and it gets the job done in under just half an hour. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. I will catch up with you next time.